Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to show you how to set up a secondary ledger device to use as your mirror backup for your cryptocurrency hardware wallet. So let's get started. All right, so I'm here in front of my computer. I've got my Ledger Live open. As you can see, I have several accounts here where I manage uh, different cryptocurrencies uh, with different wallet balances. As you can see, I have uh, multiple uh, Bitcoin accounts. I've got multiple Ethereum accounts. So all of this is being managed in my Ledger Live. And I have my trusty Ledger Nano X to hold the private keys for all of these wallets, right? That's what keeps it secure. But what if the unthinkable happens, right? What if I lose this device? What if the device gets damaged? What if I spill coffee on it or step on it or the dog chews it up? Or it glitches up when I'm trying to run a firmware update, gets bricked, something like that. It doesn't happen very often, but it's not outside the realm of possibility. So what are you gonna do? Well, uh, you'll still be able to view your crypto balances and you'd still be able to deposit crypto into your accounts, but you wouldn't be able to move crypto out, right? Because this is the device that signs outgoing transactions. So you would basically just have to order another one from Ledger and there'd be that gap while you're waiting for your new device to come where you're powerless over your crypto, right? You don't wanna be in that situation. So the best thing to do is to have a backup device ready to go in case something happens to your go-to device. So I'm gonna show you how to get that backup device set up so that if anything happens to your main device, you'll be ready to hit the ground running with your backup device. So you're basically gonna need two things to get this all set up. You're gonna need a brand new ledger, and I've got one here. And you're going to need your 24-word recovery phrase of your original ledger, right? This is the card that came with the ledger device. And when you set up your ledger, you filled out this card with these backup words. Now, you'll want to keep these in a safe place, and you don't want anyone to see what they are. So, But the trick is, when we open up this device, we're not going to set it up as new. We're going to open up this device and do a full restore. And once we do that, this new device is going to be a mirror image of our original device. And we'll be able to manage all of these accounts that are already in Ledger Live with this new device. Right, so I'll show you how to get that set up. I've got a little B-roll prepared on doing the restore, but just keep in mind, you're gonna open up this new device and you're going to restore it, right? You're not going to set it up as a new device. You're going to do a restore with the 24-word recovery phrase of your original device. All right, so we'll hit that arrow. Gives us some instructions. All right, now, uh, we do not want to set this up as a new device. We're going to uh, go restore from recovery phrase. Now, at this point, you want to have the 24-word recovery phrase of your old ledger handy. All right, so I'm gonna hit both buttons. All right, and the first thing it wants me to do is choose a pin code. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'll hit both buttons. All right, and then I'm gonna to need to enter that pin code twice. All right, and after we've confirmed that pin code, it wants us to enter the recovery phrase. So I'm gonna hit both buttons. And then now it wants me to uh, select the number of words in my recovery phrase. So mine is 24, so I'm gonna select 24, hit both buttons, and then it wants word number one. All right, so uh, here's where uh, it's a little bit tedious, but we'll get through it. So uh, we just need to uh, navigate over to the first letter of the first word. And they're in alphabetical order, of course. All right, uh, so as you start to spell out the word, uh, it will uh, offer you, uh, you'll, you'll be eliminating other words and then uh, the word will appear. Uh, so just keep spelling it uh, and then maybe after you're on the second or third letter, it'll uh, show you your word. All right, now uh, at one point the word appeared 
uh, but it was the incorrect word. So what I had to do was navigate using the uh, arrow keys to get to the correct word. So it presented me uh, several choices of words. Now it's asking me for word number four. Okay, and let's say that uh, a word appears and it's not uh, one of your words and uh, you don't find your word at all. You've got this clear word feature uh, so that you could go back and perhaps you made a, a typo. And then you can go back and re-enter the word, uh, that number of word. All right, so uh, I'm on number 15 now. Okay, now I finally got to the last word. I'm going to hit both buttons, and then it's processing. And it says the device is ready. So, hallelujah. Hit both buttons. Oh, and I can just go to Access Dashboard. All right, so I'm going to do that. Now, you'll notice that there are no apps on here. So I'm going to need to reinstall all of the apps for all of the cryptocurrencies that I had on the older device. All right, so once you have finished the restore of your newer device, you've got two devices now, and they are mirror images of each other. You've restored the master private key on the new device. So now we just need to get all of the apps installed on the newer device. So we'll disconnect our original device, right? And then we'll connect our new device. All right, we're gonna enter our pin. All right, now when you did the restore, during that process, it did ask you to choose a pin on your new backup device. You don't need to use the same pin as you're using on your original device. You can if you want to, but you, you're not, it's not necessary. So if you'd like to choose a different pin for your backup device, that's fine. It will still be a mirror image of the original device, simply with a different pin. But if you want to keep things straight in your head, then you can also use the same pin on the second device as well. So that's your choice. All right, now once you've got the new device attached, uh, this is what you're going to see on the screen, right? It's going to be empty. And you're going to need to install all of the apps that you had on your original device. So I'm going to show you how that goes. Now I can't stress enough, there is nothing that you need to do with your Ledger Live accounts, right? All of the accounts are that will be the same as they were before. The balances haven't changed. Uh, the transaction histories haven't changed. You don't need to delete or add any accounts, right? You're just gonna pick up where you left off. But you do need to go to the manager. So I'm gonna show you that. You're gonna need to go over here to the manager, right? And you just need to install all of the apps that you had on the original device. Uh, if you can't remember, just connect the original device and look at all the apps that are on there and like write down a little list, right? Uh, but it's pretty straightforward, right? For most of us, all of these accounts are just going to need their corresponding app, right? Just look at your accounts and uh, go back over to manager and install the appropriate app for each account. So I'm going to get that done, right? And you'll notice that it says processing on the device as I'm installing. All right, and there you see I've got the Bitcoin on there. Now I don't need to go over to manage accounts yet. I can uh, because the accounts are already there, right? All I need to do is just keep installing apps until I have all the apps that I need on here. All right, you can see now I've got Bitcoin and Ethereum on here. Now you might be asking yourself at this point, how does the device remember the wallets that were on here before? Well, it's kind of interesting how that works, right? The device does not need to remember anything. Let's just say the math remembers, okay? Starting from the original master private key that we restored when we uh, set up this secondary device, all of the wallets get generated mathematically, right? Because this is a deterministic hardware wallet which means that whenever you install the Bitcoin app on here, it doesn't just pick some random Bitcoin wallet address, right? It uses the master private key to generate a specific Bitcoin wallet. 
and it will always install the same Bitcoin wallet first. Now, as you noticed, I had multiple Bitcoin accounts, but we can handle that, right? All of those accounts will also be generated when I add this Bitcoin wallet. I know it's a modern marvel, but we the device does not need to remember your wallets. Your wallets will be deterministically regenerated when you install the apps. All right, so let's uh, continue on. All right, now I think I got most of the apps back on there. Uh, they don't all have to be put on there right away, right? Uh, whenever I need to use one of the apps, I can always install it at a later date too. So uh, it's completely up to you how you want to do this. But now that I've uh, got all of these apps installed, now these two devices are mirror images of each other. I can use either device to manage my accounts. So and we can confirm that if we just go over to the account interface and I go over to this Ethereum wallet and I can just confirm by doing a receive, right? I'll hit continue and then it wants me to go into the Ethereum app of my device. This is the secondary device, right? This is the new device. So it's indicating that I need to open the Ethereum app. I'll hit both buttons. Right, and lo and behold, the verify address comes up and it shows me that the address of this account matches the device, right? If the devices don't match when you try to do this, you're gonna see a, a message that says, oops, something went wrong, right? Or device doesn't match or something of that nature. So now we've just confirmed that the Ethereum wallet that the private keys are stored on my device right here matches the one that's in the account interface, right? That's what we want. We want to be able to manage this wallet with this device. So our secondary device has passed the test with flying colors. Let's go ahead and approve that, right? And then uh, I'll just run over to one of the Bitcoin accounts. We'll hit uh, Bitcoin, we'll do a receive, and then uh, we'll just wait. Now it's gonna tell us to exit the Ethereum app, which we'll do. Right, and now it wants us to enter the Bitcoin app. Right, we'll hit both buttons. All right, and there we go. The Bitcoin address is showing on the device. That is a confirmation that the device matches the Bitcoin account, right? And then we'll be able to send crypto out if we want to, if we want to send it out to someone else, or if we want to transfer it to an exchange, if we're going to trade or whatever. So now we've confirmed that the Bitcoin accounts match, right? That the Bitcoin account is now uh, contained on the device, right? The private key for this Bitcoin account is on our secondary device now, right? And then we can go through all of the other accounts and do the exact same thing. And so now we have a secondary device, right? And then we can just disconnect this secondary device and put it in a drawer somewhere or keep it in a safe deposit box at our bank, or uh, hide it at, in our summer lake cottage, or whatever, or just in our safe, right? And then our go-to device, you know, will be the one that we use on our, you know, in a daily basis for managing our crypto accounts. But if anything happens to our go-to device, our primary device, all we need to do is run over and pull out our, our hidden secondary backup device and we're good to go, all right? It's a very safe way to manage your crypto and have a ready backup in case you run into problems, right? You don't wanna get caught not being able to manage your crypto, right? It's a very frustrating feeling, right? And then if you have to order a new device and wait for it, that's very stressful. So go ahead and get yourself a backup device, uh, do a full restore, reinstall all of your apps, and you'll have instant access to your crypto anytime you need it. If there are any questions about anything I did, please throw them up in the comments and I'll do my best to get them answered. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that you can click that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.